welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. In the face of soaring inflation and rising energy costs, municipalities in Alberta have been searching for innovative ways to enhance energy efficiency and trim costs. The challenge, though, lies in implementing these upgrades, often not happening due to financial constraints. In a recent press conference, the province of Alberta unveiled a groundbreaking initiative that aims to empower both rural and urban municipalities. The province announced through the Technology Innovation and Emissions Reduction Program, a substantial $18 million investment will aim to make positive changes in municipalities throughout Alberta. Municipalities can now leverage this financial support to hire staff, replace windows, upgrade lights, and implement practical improvements in arenas, community centers, and other various buildings. The organization behind this initiative is the Municipal Climate Change Action Center, which is currently celebrating 15 years of working with municipalities across Alberta to bring positive change to them. The Municipal Climate Change Action Center will expand its suite of programs to help Alberta municipalities not just save energy, but also lower costs and reduce emissions. Joining us in this discussion today is Municipal Climate Change Action Center Executive Director, Trina Innes. Trina will help delve into the details of this $18 million program and explore how these funds will shape the future of energy efficiency in both rural and urban municipalities. This is Municipal Affairs. Trina, thank you so much for doing this. I want to start by talking about the announcement that was made last week in Alberta around the TIER program. As the Executive Director for the Municipal Climate Change Action Center, how does this funding aim to address the challenges faced by Alberta municipalities improving energy efficient in 2024? Fantastic. Well, thank you for the question, Chris. Uh, the Technology Innovation and Emissions Reduction Program is a provincial strategy to address climate change and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So it focuses on projects that are technological innovation and emissions reduction across various sectors, including uh, municipalities. So it, the program provides funding to projects that contribute to the development of uh, renewable energy, energy efficiency, sustainable practices, things of that nature. So with municipalities, they face a number of challenges when it comes to energy uh, efficiency uh, in their corporate operations. So many municipalities have limited resources, be it financial or human uh, resources. So it makes it challenging for them to invest in and take action on climate uh, action plans. They have a limited expertise sometimes to make it difficult uh, to do climate action planning. Uh, and this can include a whole suite of knowledge areas where they may need support like urban planning, renewable energy technology, climate adaptation strategies. Uh, and then funding of course is challenging for many municipalities. So anything that improves the availability of grants or subsidies um, can help impact a municipality's ability to implement climate uh, solutions. Now, your organization, the Municipal Climate Change Action Center, has been in operation since 2009, if I'm not mistaken. Um, can you elaborate and sort of point to tangible items, specific upgrades and improvements that your organization has helped improve with municipalities? Because an announcement like this is great, but if you show me what people have used this program to uh, upgrade, then that makes more people say, oh, I didn't know. So for you, what are some of the specific upgrades, improvements that you have seen over the last few years? Sure, I would love to share some examples. <laughs> So as a little bit of background, the Municipal Climate Change Action Center, it is a partnership between Alberta municipalities, the rural municipalities of Alberta and the government of Alberta. And the initiative overall is focused on helping local governments take action to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and build more resilience uh, against the impacts of climate change. So this program was, uh, or initiative was created in 2009. It's provided support 
through the government of Alberta as its primary funder uh, for a range of greenhouse gas reduction products. So energy efficiency initiatives, renewable energy installations, and other measures to help uh, really advance municipal operations. We've provided uh, capacity building, financial support, and other information to help municipalities make progress in this space. So tangibles, I'll give you a few examples uh, from three of the programs that we've run uh, most recently. So we had a recreation energy conservation program. And over the last five years, 80 municipalities have worked on over 200 projects in this space, uh, conducting audits, energy efficiency audits, engineering studies, and actually installing energy efficiency upgrades. Uh, and as a result of these upgrades, facilities are saving about 30,000 uh, gigajoules of energy each year. So projects have included things like lighting retrofits, boiler upgrades, heat recovery systems, real ice systems. So I'll give you two examples of that. Uh, Foothills County, their Scott Siemens Sport Rink, they uh, conducted an ice plant heat recovery project. So they are recovering heat from the ice plant for space heating and water heating. And this really reduces the amount of gas required to operate uh, their systems. So previous to that, waste heat from the ice plant was vented to the outside. Now we're being able to recover that heat and use it internally. That project is saving that facility about $25,000 per year in operational costs and is reducing GHGs by about 179 tons. Another project example, Town of Drumheller Memorial uh, Arena, they put in a real ice retrofit. This is an energy saving uh, system. It de-aerates the water that they use to flood on ice rinks. Uh, and previous to that, the water was heated to make it um, to make high quality ice. This technology has found a system to do it without having to uh, heat it as much. That obviously reduces energy consumption. So they're saving, it's a smaller project, but about $2,600 a year by switching to this uh, technology. Another can I, program- Can I interject oh, just yeah, for one second absolutely. before you? Because, um, how how does your organization select the qualified uh, projects that are going to be applied? Because you, you talk about Foothills County, you talk about the town of Drumheller. Can any municipality apply, like from the smallest village to the largest city and town, or are is this or is this uh, funding more towards uh, medium to mid sized cities and towns across Alberta and even uh, counties and rural municipalities? So uh, Municipal Climate Change Action Center as a collaboration is open to all municipalities in Alberta. Municipalities of all size participate and we uh, cap the amount of funding that any individual municipality is able to access so that we can make sure that funding is available to more municipalities across the province. Uh, so that's how we, how we manage uh, to ensure diversity uh, in participation. The intake is generally first come, first serve. Uh, and we also are looking for projects that meet a certain level of greenhouse gas uh, reductions in order to qualify for funding. As we have more municipal leaders who listen to the show than outside, does your organization uh, help municipal uh, councils and municipalities sort of file the paperwork to ensure that they're doing it correctly? Or is there a basically a walkthrough on how to apply to get this funding? So we uh, create a guidebook that provides instructions for the application. And we try to make the application process very simple and easy for municipalities to uh, complete. Uh, as you can imagine, the skill level and even the the uh, number of staff varies from uh, municipality to municipality. So we want to make it really, really simple for people to get on board. Uh, one of the programs we'll probably get into later is diving into what I call the underrepresented or underserved municipalities who haven't uh, participated in our programs in the past. And we will be providing some additional supports to 
to those municipalities. So if you don't mind, I'm going to sort of ask that. The follow-up question then is, how will this $18 million investment that the province announced uh, last week in funding contribute to supporting energy conservation, energy management, outreach, and engagement for Alberta municipal Alberta communities through the MCCAC? Sure. So we have two buckets of work. The first bucket is uh, Applied Climate Action Programs. So like the Recreation Energy Conservation Program that I mentioned earlier, we'll be actually opening up this program to all community buildings. So it could be town halls, it could be fire halls, um, in addition to recreation centers. So helping uh, conduct audits, engineering studies, and actually put uh, energy efficiency upgrades into those facilities, that will be that program. The other element of that is uh, energy management supports. So we'll be providing staffing grants for full-time energy managers to be located within an individual municipality or municipalities can share if they're a smaller size. And those positions will be uh, assessing the varying facilities, identifying energy consumption, uh, exploring energy saving opportunities and really helping those municipalities navigate the energy uh, improvement planning and implementation process. Uh, in addition, the, we'll be launching a roving energy manager. So there are really small municipalities. They may only have one to five facilities. They just need someone to come in and really help them uh, by doing the energy audit identifying the energy savings opportunity, and then linking them to funding supports and other services to help them implement those projects. So we'll be uh, working hand in hand with them to do the work and educate them about the benefits of this work as well. On the capacity building side, we have a couple of things going on there that are really exciting. We're working with uh, an organization called Quest Canada on a net zero community accelerator. We have eight communities that have opted into this uh, program, and it will be helping municipalities on community emissions plans. So a lot of the work we've done in the past has been corporate emissions in the municipal operations. Now we'll be looking at opportunities across the community. Another do you mind, one that do you mind me asking, go ahead. Do, do you know what, what, like, can you name some of those eight communities that you're just talking about right now? Just uh, so that way, maybe the, there's a counselor going, how can I get on that list? Or how can my community get on that list? Collaboration with Quest Canada is with a number of other organizations. It's a prairies cohort. So there's communities in Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. Within Alberta, we have St. Albert, the town of Printer Creek and the MD, they're working together. Lethbridge, Medicine Hat, Devon, and Okotoks. And we're working on uh, agreements with a couple of other communities as well. So I, very, I, very exciting. I appreciate that. I am cautious of time and I have one last question that mm -hmm. I need to ask you before uh, I let you go here. Um, your work is with rural municipalities of Alberta, Alberta municipalities, and in partnership with the provincial government as well. While details are still being ironed out over the allocation of this $18 million announcement last week, is there an area, is there a specific area that you, your organization, will be focusing on in 2024 to support municipalities with this funding? Or is it a blank slate, like you said, first come, first serve, whoever wants it can come and ask for it and we can give you an allotment of this $18 million. Yeah, it is generally first come, first serve. We try to give a lot of notice to municipalities so they have time to plan and prepare their applications. Uh, but the part that has me most excited is this roving energy manager concept where we can go out to these municipalities that have maybe never done work in the climate or energy efficiency space and help them uh, because they have that limited capacity. Providing them the, these supports, helping them understand and realize the benefits. If we can help these small municipalities who are often 
really cash strap, identify savings, then they can either invest in more energy efficiency savings or other priorities in their community. So that's the one that has me the most excited right now. When do you hope to have that up and running, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, the two energy manager programs would be probably by the end of the March, we'll be doing some intake for that. Uh, and then the other projects for the community energy conservation projects will be by the summer, hopefully earlier, but by the summer for sure. Trina, it's a pleasure to sit down with you. I feel like we just scratched the surface, but I feel like you and I are probably going to chat a lot over the next few years. So thank you so much. <laughs> Oh, you're most welcome. Now, if today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all of our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations on the cross-border interviews and even our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. Now, we are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage, committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged. Your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of the top-notch content you have come to love. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking.